Hello, welcome to Edge CGI. My name is Jason Alt. This is the final part of this tutorial series. All right, so for the final part of this video, I'm going to show you how we can layer these um, individual texture maps all together to create our final texture. So I'm going to layer them together um, as I would typically do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this complete map here. And I mostly just use this uh, as a reference. So I have my uh, UVW unwraps here, and then I have the one that I'm going to use for my selection. So I'm going to drag that one in first. So I'm going to go to Select, Load Selection, and uh, use the Alpha channel here. So that's going to just select everything for me, which is good. I'm going to hold Shift and drag that into here. And I hold Shift, everything will line up. So I can go ahead and close that up. Uh, and then I'm going to bring in my diffuse map. So again, select, load selection, hold shift, move that into place, close that. And then my shadow maps. So again, select, load selection, drag that in, and close. And then finally I have my uh, UVW unwrap. Uh, I'm going to just hold shift and drag that in. I don't need to do the selection. And close that out. And make this full, full there again. Um, so my UVs, uh, I'm going to set this up as uh, exclusion for the uh, layer mode here. Um, that way I can just see my unwraps over top of everything else. And whenever I do my final render, I end up turning this off. So I've got my shadows here, which is nice, so I can see where all my shadows fall. So uh, I do a couple of things with these. This selection one, I'm simply using this so if I need to select something easy. Uh, let me be on the right layer here. So it makes it easy to go in and select these colors, or I can simply go in, if I turn off contiguous, <clears throat> it selects everything that's brown or everything that's gray. So it makes it very easy um, to kind of select these things. So um, so that's why I end up doing that, um, having this selection layer. Okay, uh, nothing selected. Okay, Control J, I'm gonna drag that over top. What I can do is actually colorize the shadows in this layer by using the diffuse here. So I'm gonna just go down through until I find one that works uh, really nicely. Uh, overlay is not too bad. Overlay will work. So I'm going to put those together. So Control E will just combine them. So now my shadows uh, also have this um, bit of coloring to them. So they're uh, the shadows are not going to a gray or a black color. They're going to uh, just a darkened version of the colors. So again, if I set this to multiply, I'm going to turn my diffuse back on here. We can kind of see what that's doing now. The black area is here. That's where my shadows. Um, oops. That's where these bands go across the chest. So something else I can do is, if I go back into my selection here, and I'm going to select uh, all of the brown areas here, and what I'm going to do is. Uh, I'm going to duplicate that part of the layer, just the brown layer. And I'm going to turn the opacity down on this, uh, probably to about 30%. So now this is also going to do the same idea where it's adding the color to it, but now anywhere that I would have normally had black is going to again be a dark brown rather than um, going all the way to black. And another thing I will typically do is I will blur this. So I'm going to go to Filter, Blur. Now I blur the shadows so they're a little bit softer around the edges, mostly around these areas. Okay. Um, so we'll blur that uh, probably about four. And then something else I have to do once I do that is if I blur this, uh, some of the edges are going to end up not being covered now. So what I can do is hit Control J quite a few times there, and that'll cover all the edges again 
so I don't have that issue. And I'll just combine those together. So now this is my shadow layer. Oops, shadow. So if I set that to multiply and turn my diffuse back on, so we can see what this is doing, where it's shading on here. Okay. All right, so instead of just using multiply, I'm going to duplicate this. I also like to use soft light because it also lightens. So if I use that in conjunction with shadow, uh, with the multiply layer, it darkens that. So that's why I end up setting these to like 50%. So now you can see that the shadows that I'm getting here are a little more subtle. You can kind of see how these are both affecting differently. Okay, and I'm going to leave those uh, as is. I'm not going to combine them together or else these will stop working. Another thing that I will sometimes try is uh, overlay. Sometimes overlay gives a nice effect. Um, color burn, if I want my shadows to be a little bit darker, um, I can do that. I actually like the way that looks. Might keep that over multiply. Yeah, kind of like that for this box. Um, and the reason I do this is it sets up a lot of the texturing for me for a lot of the like really basic um, sort of pattern and stuff in here. So that's what I like about it. Okay, so some of the other parts here. Um, I've got the, um, I got the areas, let me zoom in here. Okay, so I've got these areas. Maybe I don't want this cut up so much. Um, and if we look underneath, so this is what we've got um, underneath our um, texture there. So something I can end up doing is I can select this. So select all the gray areas. Make sure you're on the right layer. Always helps. Okay. Now I'm going to come back to the diffuse. And I'm going to... Um, contract my selection. So I'm going to zoom in here just so I can see how far I should go. If you zoom in really far, you can see your uh, grid for your pixels to show up. So I'd say somewhere about 13 or 14 pixels I could contract in. So I'm going to zoom back out here. So I'm going to go to Select, Modify, and contract. I'm going to type in 14 pixels so that goes inward and then I'm going to feather this so select modify feather and I'll set this at something like 5 and um, I'm going to delete that um, and actually let's undo that I'm going to um, remove the areas here. That's pretty good there. Let's get the ones on the other side. That way I don't delete the um, dark parts here. Okay, and that's probably fine. Okay, and I'll do delete again. There. So now I've only really got the scratches around some of the corners. Um, so I'm going to save this just so we can look at and see what this looks like <clears throat> Excuse me. currently. So I'm going to save it as a Photoshop file, and then the final one I'll end up saving out as, um, I'll save the final one out as a Targa file. So I'm just going to call this chest uh, complete, something like that, or diffuse. Save. And I'm going to bring that into 3ds Max. And I can kind of disregard all of these textures now because they'll no longer apply. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this, which will just turn our box gray. I'm going to say show shading and viewport. I'm going to drag in my new bitmap. And then we'll get chest diffuse, open, collapsed, and OK. And then we'll drag that into our diffuse. And so you can already see here that 
uh, if you go back to the beginning of the video um, that we had made, um, I had shown like a basic texture that I started with. And this gives me a lot more to kind of uh, look at, and it's a little, little nicer to um, kind of see. Um, now what I need to do is do some of the details for like the individual boards. So that's the next part. And the nice part is I can just use the UVW maps to kind of lay out that grid. And what's nice is since I'm using the Photoshop file, as I update Photoshop and I hit save, it's automatically going to uh, carry those changes through. So for laying out the uh, individual boards, and I'm just going to kind of do this freehand. So I'm going to select one of the darker colors here. I'm going to do this as a brand new layer in the diffuse. So new layer. And actually something I might be able to do to kind of speed this up, which might look kind of nice, uh, besides just drawing those in, is since I do have this selection uh, from the UVs here, I can't, I'm going to turn contiguous back on, but I can actually select where these um, boards are. And so it should be missing in between. Yeah, good. And so I'm just going to go down the line here and select these. And I'll, I'll test something out first before uh, I end up drawing all the boards in, because this might be an easier way to kind of handle this. And I think that kind of covers those. Okay, so I'm going to, um, with my diffuse, hit Control J. And actually, you know what? We've got the areas that are in between the boards here. So I'm just going to rectangle select this. I'd gone down a little too far there. All right, so I'm going to hit Control J. Oops, make sure we're on the right layer here. Control J. So now that gives us just the individual boards here. It still didn't end up selecting that. Not certain why. Um, oh no, I did. It's because the UV's on here. So I'm going to turn this back on with it, and I'm just going to try one of my layer styles or one of my blending options here. No, it's layer style. I had the right word. Thought I did, but. Um, so I'm going to do an uh, inner glow. I'm going to set this to a dark color here. Let's go grab the one on the side here that I was using. I'm going to use this as a multiply and set my size and my choke. And then I'll also use um, stroke. This will be where those boards are. So I'm going to use the same dark color that I had here. Um, and I want to use, I'm going to use center. Yeah, that's too much now. All right. And let's see how that looks. Okay, so I am getting lines here. I did actually forget to go back and select along there. may not be really noticeable based on what I have over here, but I could always go through and easily fix this. Um, all right, so let me save this, and we'll see what that looks like. So file, save. I'll come back to max. And there, now we can see the individual boards. And that actually doesn't look too bad. Um, it's got the boards in there that I want. Now you could go through, obviously, and draw in other details, like little nicks in the boards, uh, knots and stuff like that. And those are all things that you can kind of uh, do after the fact. Um, the nice thing with the render to texture is it kind of bakes the lighting in. So this asset would be able to be used in game um, pretty easily. Um, and the lighting would kind of allow for that. And I can also use the uh, maps that I had created 
to create a bump map um, so that I could really show the uh, detail in here for how this is broken up. And I'm going to bring my lighting in again. So I'm just going to go to merge and lighting. I'll select everything there. And I'm just going to set this back to 44. And let's see what we're looking at here. See if it looks all right. And there's a lot more you can really do with this type of stuff um, by adding in different types of specularity maps so that you could have some areas be shinier than others. Like I would want these areas here where this is dark um, to not be as shiny. And I'll kind of show you what I mean by that. If I come back to Photoshop, if I take my um, my shadow map, and if I duplicate this, and I'm just going to set this to desaturate. I'm going to make just a shadow map here real quick so you can see what that would look like. And I'll duplicate that. And I'll desaturate it. And I'm going to just set my blending mode here. That should work. That should be dark enough. Um, yeah, so I'll add these together. Is that at 50? Yeah, let me set that back to 100%. Oops. There we go. So I'm going to combine these. And this would basically be the shadow map that I would use. So we'll take a look at what that would look like. So I'll just save that out as a targa. So that'll be chest spec save. Uh, it can just be a 24 bit image. Um, so let's bring that in and we'll apply it as the bump as well, just to see how that looks. It might be a little too strong, but like I said, we'll just test it out and see how it looks. So let's see, chest spec. And I'm going to hold shift and duplicate this. This one will go into my kind of hard to see there bump map. And then this one's going to go into my uh, specular level. So like I said, it'll, it'll allow us to have some areas shinier than others. And then areas that are dark, um, won't be as shiny. So there you can really see now that the, the shininess that we had here before isn't like going through the boards and the bump map is doing a really good job of also breaking up um, the, re uh, the specularity on here. That concludes this part of the tutorial. Thanks for watching Edge CGI and don't forget to subscribe, like, and share if you've enjoyed this tutorial. And thanks for watching.